God has not ordained a downtime for us as believers. Kingdom words, they are rewards of walking with God. To be a Christian does not mean to live a pitiable life. It is to live an enviable life. Kingdom wealth is supernaturally defended by God. If God give it, God will keep it. Good evening, viewers. You are once again welcome to our online midweek communion service here in Winners Chapel International, Nairobi, Kenya. And we trust God that tonight's broadcast will deliver to you your much desired miracles and supernatural turnarounds in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, we shall continue our teaching series on the subject of understanding the fundamentals of kingdom wealth. Understanding the fundamentals of kingdom wealth. And it's important for you to pay close attention to what is going to be taught tonight because the Bible is speaking in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse number 13. The scripture says, Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Take fast hold of instructions. He says, keep her. Don't let her go, for she is thy life. There is a place of instruction. Instructions of righteousness is what leads to constructions in life. And the things we'll be doing in the course of this study is instructions of righteousness. The Bible says, keep her. Don't let her go. Because she will guarantee you life and well-being. The proof of a man's knowledge is liberty. Don't assume you know until you are able to show what you know. Until what you know is evident in your life. So I like to believe God with you tonight that as you listen to the word that will be coming your way, as you lay hold on it, you keep it, and you begin to live by it, the proofs of kingdom wealth shall be made practically manifested in your lives in the precious name of Jesus. Begging, slaving, shall no longer be part of your life or your generations in the name of Jesus. The good news is this. You can break that yoke of poverty on behalf of your generation once and for all. You standing in the gap by reason of receiving the truth and walking in the truth. And you becoming an eternal excellency and the joy of many generations. And that shall be your own portion in the precious name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for another privilege that you have given us tonight to gather at your feet and to be instructed of you. We pray that you will open down our eyes tonight, that we will not assume the truth, rather we shall know the truth. And the truth that will come to know, the same truth we guarantee and set us free in the name of Jesus. We want to behold the wondrous things out of your word. Lord, we pray, show us these things as they are and enable us by your spirit to walk in it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Understanding the Fundamentals of Kingdom Wealth, Part 2. That's what we're looking at tonight. Understanding the Fundamentals of Kingdom Wealth, Part 2. 
Now, please hear this. When it comes to kingdom wealth, you don't stumble into it. I'd like to read to us from Job chapter 22, beginning from verse 21. It says, Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. Acquaint now thyself with him. When you get acquainted with God, when you get to know the ways of God, when you get to understand the workings of God, when you get to know how God, you know, moves and how God works his works, he says, peace will come unto you. Acquaint now thyself with him. I'm reading to you from Job chapter 22 from verse 21. He says, and be at peace. He says, thereby good shall come unto thee. Not failure, not sorrow, not pain, not shame. He says, when a man gets acquainted with the ways of God, when a man begins to walk in the ways of God, when a man begins to do the things that God has commanded him to do, he says, when you begin to do that, he says, you enter into a life of peace. He, and the subsequent result is that good shall come unto thee. I want to pray for you tonight. For as many that are practitioners of the covenant, stay at it. Because good is coming your way in the name of Jesus. In an overflowing measure, because God cannot lie and his words cannot fail. He says, thereby good shall come unto thee. He said, receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, the things that he's telling you. He said, lay up his words in your heart. Don't argue, don't throw it away, don't reject it. He says, lay it up in your heart. He says, if you will return to the Almighty with the word that you have heard, with the words that have been laid up in your heart, he says, thou shalt be built up. He says, thou shalt be built up, not you will go down. He says, put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. Verse 24, he said, then, can you see that? He says, shall thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Listen, you can't walk with the Almighty and be small on the earth. You can't walk with the great God and not end up great. Hear me, precious people of God, tonight. God has a scriptural pathway, his own ordained pathway for accessing the resources that he has ordained for our lives. It's not your own method, it's not your own strategy, your own scheming, your own effort cannot bring you into the God order of wealth, into the God kind of wealth. No. There's a difference between supernatural wealth and wealth that you get by reason of your effort. I will show you a very distinct difference tonight. The Bible tells us in Haggai chapter 2, verse number 8, that the silver belongs to God. The gold belongs to God. In Psalms chapter 50, verse 10, he says, he says, the cattle upon the thousand hills, they are his. So the gold that we serve is a gloriously wealthy God. I'd like you to understand something. Righteousness is not synonymous with lack and want, nor with poverty. So God has a plan. God has, a, a, you know, an ordained pathway to bring us into his heavenly resources that will be made manifest in our lives on the earth. He has a way. He has a way. We are not orphans. 
He has not left us here fatherless, without care, without provisions. No, he has provisions. He has resources available for us. But there is the how-to of getting it. There is the how-to of accessing it. So that we don't live as often. So that our Christianity doesn't smell. Are you following what I'm saying? To be a Christian does not mean to live a pitiable life. It is to live an enviable life. A colorful life. A glorious life. To be a wonder to behold among men. Praise the Lord. Hear me. Isaiah chapter 49. Verse number 15. You begin to read from verse 15 down to 16. Hear what the scripture says. It says, Can a woman forget a sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? He said, Yea, they may forget. He said, Yet I, God, will not forget thee. Why? Because I have come, you have come into a covenant relationship with me by reason of new birth. But beyond the new birth, there is what you must do. Now listen, listen. Many people have received the person of Jesus. But very few are living by the principles of Jesus. There is a difference between the person of Jesus and the principles of Jesus. What you receive at new birth is the person of Jesus. But what helps you to actualize the kingdom life is the principles of Jesus. The instructions of the word of God, such as you have been taught tonight. And until you begin to walk by the principles of the kingdom, which Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom, you cannot experience the kingdom life. And that is why you find many people, even though they are born again, their life does not reflect the beauty of the kingdom to which they have been saved, to which they have been born into at new birth. Why? They receive the person of Jesus, but they left behind the principles of Jesus. They still want to do it their old way. They still want to do it their own strategy. They still want to employ their own strategy rather, rather than submitting to the words of God. When it comes to giving and receiving, they argue it. They struggle with it. They contend with it. Must we pay tight? Must we do this? Oh, listen. When you become too stingy to give unto God, then you cannot access the resources of God. Because Luke 6, 38 says, Give and it shall be given. Now let's get it, this. i like you to understand, precious people of God tonight, that no man plans his life for failure. No man. No man, nobody plans his life for failure or for poverty. Rather, certain spiritual forces interplace around a man's life and cripples his destiny and frustrates his works. And you know why those spiritual forces come into play to cripple the man's life and frustrate his destiny, destroy the works of his hand? Why? Because those things are not in the works of his hand is not according to the principles of Jesus that he has received. So you want the actualization of the kingdom life, the beauty of the kingdom life in your own being. To be your own personal experience, you must come to a place that you submit to the principles of God. You can't break it, you break it, it breaks you. You can't fault it because you are too small. Before the beginning began, God set things in order that this is how it will work. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. You want to be a victor as a believer. You must come to the point where you submit to your life to the law of the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus. That is what will guarantee you dominion over the works of the devil that wants to keep you down. Too many people born again or rather, so many people are born again, but very few are actually enjoying the beauty of the kingdom life. 
why they have received the person of Jesus, but they are yet to submit to the principles of Jesus. The principles of Jesus is what we are teaching tonight on how you can encounter supernatural wealth. Praise the Lord. Now, what is this kingdom wealth that we are talking about? Remember, we are looking at understanding the fundamentals of kingdom wealth. What is kingdom wealth? For tonight's service, we shall be defining kingdom wealth, number one, as operating by the resources of heaven. Operating by the resources of heaven. When a man is experiencing heavenly supplies, that man is under open heaven. That man is up, I mean, that man is living under covenant wealth. He, he has access to the to the wealth that comes from God. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says, For by strength no man prevails. For by strength shall no man prevail. So when it comes to kingdom wealth, or what we call covenant wealth, is not a function of your strength. No, it is operating by the resources of heaven. Experiencing heavenly supply, supplies beyond human ability. That is the kind of supply Paul was praying over the Philippian church. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Very quickly. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 19. Paul said, he says, but my God shall supply. Who shall supply? He says, my God. He says, but my God shall supply all your need according to to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Not according to the, you know, the supplies, the, 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 the supplies of your need will not come according to your strength, according to your effort, according to your ability, not according to your human connection, who you know. He said it shall be according to the riches, 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 riches of Christ in glory. It's according to the riches of Christ. That is heavenly supplies. That is divine provisions that is inexhaustible. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're talking about divine provisions, supplies that is inexhaustible. In its multiplied dimensions and facets. That's what kingdom wealth is all about. When a man is operating by the resources of heaven, when he's experiencing heavenly supplies in all its ramifications, you say this man has entered into kingdom wealth. Praise the Lord. The resources of the Almighty, the resources of the ancient of days, is at his disposal. He's working for him, making life to be glorious on earth. And I'd like you to know that this kind of kingdom world that we're talking about only answer upon a man's life when he or she is also operating by the giving covenant. You see, one interesting thing you find in the church today is that many, many people easily quote Philippians 4.19, but my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus, according to his riches in glory, rather, by Christ Jesus. Thank you very much. Almost everyone in church knows that. But can I say this? Philippians 4.19 is a prophetic blessing by reason of an action that has taken place in the preceding verses. It's not a promise to be claimed. It's a prophetic declaration in response of an action that had initiated it. Now get down to verse 15. Let's read Philippians chapter 4, verse 15. We'll run through to verse 18 before we get to verse 19. 
Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 to 18. Very quickly, hear what Paul was speaking there. Paul said, Now ye Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, is no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. No church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye Philippians only. Take note of that. No church communicated, nobody communicated, nobody walked in it. Nobody took the steps of giving on the subject of giving and receiving except ye Philippians only. Now verse 16. He says, for even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Can you see that? You kept at it giving and giving and giving. Verse 17. He says, not because I desired a gift. I didn't lobby around you people. I didn't write a special letter to you. I didn't greet you specially because I want an offering. But it was just in your heart that you kept ministering to me. Now look at that verse 17 very well. He said, not that I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Verse 18. Verse 18. He says, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent. Can you see that? The things which were sent, things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice. Can you see that? Acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Verse 19. So as a father that you have ministered to, I decree over you that the God that I serve shall supply. Can you see it? He was praying the Father's blessing over them in response to what they have done. So you don't enter into covenant worlds. You don't enter into the resources of heaven, experiencing heavenly supplies without you initiating it by giving unto God and the advancement of his kingdom. Number two, what is covenant worlds? Covenant wealth is the true riches that comes from God. Covenant wealth is the true riches, the one that cannot be corrupted, the one that is not eaten up by moth, the true riches that comes from God. He says, it is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow. We're talking about true riches that comes from God. And it comes as a response to a man's faithfulness in covenant practices. When you begin to practice the covenant of giving, sowing, and reaping faithfully, God responds to you by giving unto you true riches. Luke's Gospel chapter 16. Luke's Gospel chapter 16. Look at verse number 10 and 11. Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verse number 10 and 11. He says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Verse, verse 11. He says, If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, in the administration of the unrighteous mammon, that is in the dispensing of money, he says, who oh, we commit to you the true riches. So when a man is faithful in dispensing, in servicing the needs of the kingdom, in, in, you know, in advancing the kingdom through his resources, God brings him into the realms of true riches that we otherwise call kingdom wealth. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, 
One unique characteristic that differentiates kingdom wealth from any other kind of wealth is this. Kingdom wealth is supernaturally defended by God. If God give it, God will keep it. Hmm. He will keep it by the provisions of wisdom. He will keep it by divine enablement. Listen, when a man truly comes into the blessings of God and make it rich, God also gives him, enables him to keep it, to sustain it. Why? Because God has found a man who is a channel of, you know, communicating to other people, not a container. So God keeps it for him. That's the truth. It's supernaturally defended. I love what the Bible says in Job chapter 22. Read Job chapter 22 with me very quickly. Read Job chapter 22 with me from verse 21. Job chapter 22 Verse number 21, Job was such a man that knew that experienced kingdom prosperity, kingdom wealth. Job chapter 22 from verse 21. Now, he says, Acquaint now thyself with God and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. Verse 22, he says, Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thy heart. Verse 23, he says, If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far away from, far from thy tabernacle. Verse 24, he says, Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of offer as the stones of the brook. Verse 25 is where I'm going. Read that with me. He says, Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. Can you see that? And thou shall have plenty of silver. Thou shall have plenty of silver. He said, Thou shall have plenty. Have you laid up gold as the stones? He says, You will now have plenty of silver. Why? He said, The Almighty shall be your defense. The Almighty, I'm not talking about human defense. You know, some people, you know, with whatever little money or resources that God has blessed them with or that they see around themselves, by reason of their effort, permit me to say that way, you know, they, 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 they are afraid. They say you have to keep it so that people won't know you have money. And you find some of those people with that mentality all around the place. Listen, when you are truly blessed, you are truly blessed. And there's nothing the enemy can do about it. You know why? God defends you. God defends you. The Bible says, yea. He says, the almighty shall be your defense. The almighty shall be your defense. I love how the prophet puts it. He said, bread shall be given you. He said, your water shall be sure. He said, your defense shall be the munitions of the rock. How? Oh, that's great. That's terrific. Now, if the almighty shall be your defense, can any evil, can any witch, can any wizard tamper with your resources? No, too small too small. The ancient of days cannot be defending it and they want to come and destroy it. They will die before their time. Listen to me. That's why your enemies shall not prevail over you. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing to fear. When God blesses a man, God secures the, the man. One of the proof of God's blessing upon a man is the security of that man. Because, listen, if you want to see prosperity, resources multiplied, there must be, secure, there must be prov I mean, protection. Where there is no protection, your provisions cannot be multiplied, cannot be preserved. There is protection so that the provisions can be preserved. But when there is no protection, it doesn't matter what you are laying up, you keep losing it and life keep going in cycle. But once your provisions is protected, is preserved, there is multiplication. So one of the true evidences of God's blessing upon a man is that God protects that man. And I love what the psalmist said in Psalm 23 verse number 5 and 6. 
He talks about the blessings of the Lord coming upon him. Psalm 23, verse 5 and 6. He said, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. They are still alive and they are seeing me doing well. He said, Thou preparest a table. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because this is the blessings of the Lord. He said, Thou preparest a table before me in the very presence of my enemy. He said, Thou anointest my head with oil. He says, My cup runneth over. Look at verse 6. He says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Where are my enemies? They are there. They can't do anything. He says, And I will keep dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. When God blesses a man, when a man enters, walk into covenant world by reason of covenant engagement and practices, God supernaturally defends him. To let the world know that this is the this is my blessing over this man's life. That's why it doesn't matter what they say against that man, he has no record. He can't do anything. Hmm. It doesn't matter how angry the angry man is, he can't stop the rising of the sun. He can't handle the wind, he can't stop the wind from blowing. That's the mystery of a blessed man. That's the mystery of a blessed man. May the Lord bring you into this realm of covenant world. We're not talking about wealth that enslaves or riches that is laid up to the owner's heart. No. No. We're talking about the one that comes from God. Serving the interest of the kingdom of God is a vital key to covenant wealth. I tell you the truth. Serving the interest of the kingdom of God. Don't live life about yourself. Don't let life be centered around I, 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 I. No. You are saved, you are alive to show for the praise of God. Now, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 27, very quickly. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 27. You want the resources of heaven to answer upon your life. Look at what the Bible says. Is it that giveth unto the poor shall not lack? Shall not lack, shall not lack. Shall not lack. He said, But he that hideth his eyes shall have many a cause. Now, listen, there are people that are alive today that their generation will suffer. Please hear me very well. There are people that are alive today that if they don't change their way, their generation will end up miserable and as paupers. The Bible says, Put that scripture there. The Bible says, he that giveth unto the poor. There are individuals today. There are individuals today. Listen to me. You are privileged to be in a position and you are siphoning pensioners' money. Money meant for pensioners. You siphon the money. You transfer it into foreign accounts. You loot the treasury of the government because you know these pensioners can't do anything to you. You think your, the office you are today will keep protecting you. Your generation will pay for it. Your generation will suffer it. They, listen, where are the politicians of yesterday who stole government's money? Who stole the people's money? We are they. Listen to me, precious people of God. Listen to me. Listen to me. I don't know who you are, wherever you are on the surface of the earth hearing me. Some people, by reason of their position, money that is meant for people, they take a, a certain percentage out of it, they corner it to themselves. You will suffer. You will suffer. Your generation will inherit the suffering. They will smell. And that's why you find people you know, who leave affliction for their generation. Children born into sorrow, into affliction. They can't, they, they can't explain where the thing is coming from. The fathers have sown sour graves, and the children's teeth are set on edge because they ate it. So listen, don't go around defrauding, stealing. There are those who, who, who market evil to destroy people's health in order to take advantage and rob them of their money. 
Listen to me. God will visit you with judgment. God will visit you with judgment. God will visit you with judgment. Stop it. You won't go far. You won't go far. You won't go far. But God has a provision of giving you what you need if you only do what is right. Praise the Lord. What are the demands that guarantees the return of our seed soul? Now that you know that covenant word answers to sowing, covenant word answers to advancing the kingdom of God and seeking the interest of the kingdom. How do you now sow your seed in order to guarantee you harvest? Number one tonight is that listen, in every returns that you call reward, there is God's portion in it. And that God's portion in it is called the tithe. There is the seed for sowing and there is the bread for eating. There is the tithe in everything that God has given you that comes to you as a return. That tithe is the one tenth. And God is saying to you, you keep the nine over ten. But one ten is what is my portion because I enabled you. I strengthened you. If it has not been the Lord who was on our side, our labors would have been in vain. But there are people who will contest who will negotiate, who will resist even the one ten from giving aid to God. Listen, and when you are giving the one ten, that is a tithe, listen to me, understand that your tithe does not bless God, but it blesses you. You are doing it for tomorrow. Your tithe does not bless God. He blesses you. He is about Tomorrow, you are sowing another seed for tomorrow's harvest. You have seen the harvest of today, but if you are going to see another harvest tomorrow, there is a seed that must be sown, beginning from your tithe. He doesn't bless God because he is the owner of everything. Your giving doesn't add to God. So calm down. Calm down. It doesn't add to God. It adds to you. It prepares a glorious tomorrow for you. Malachi chapter 3. Let's read verse 9 to 11 very quickly. Malachi chapter 3, verse 9 to 11, very quickly. He says, Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this nation, O nation. Verse 10. Verse 10. He said, Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now here with, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there be not enough room to take it. Now, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. You will understand from that Malachi that when you give your tithe unto the Lord, it opens the wind, God opens the windows of heaven in response to your tithing that he pours you out blessing much more than you have capacity to take. That's what he's saying. That means he secures for you greater things than you can imagine. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 9 to 10, telling you that your tithe does not bless God, it rather blesses you. The Bible says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. Verse 10. He says, So shall thy own bands, that is the works of your hand. He says, So shall thy bands be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Now, number two, how do we sow our seed in order to guarantee? This covenant where supernatural harvest, we must sow it cheerfully. Not sowing the seed, not giving it grumbling, I mean grumbling, murmuring, complaining. No, sow it cheerfully. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. The Bible says, Every man according as he has proposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly. Can you see that? Not grudgingly or of necessity if I don't give now. No. 
He said, not grudgingly or of necessity. He said, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Give it excitedly. Give it joyfully. Give it knowing that it's a privilege to be part of the things that is happening in the house of God. Some people have become boastful and arrogant. I mean, I won't give my tithe. It's my money. Hello, sir. Keep that thing. Keep it. God didn't beg you in the first place. Because it doesn't add to God. It rather adds to you. Some people have become boastful and arrogant. Listen, calm down. Calm down. So it cheerfully, excitedly, joyfully. That is a privilege. That God is building a house and I'm part of the building. Lord, I'm grateful. Be joyful about it. Look at what Joel chapter 1 verse 11 and 12 says. Why you must be joyful. Why you must do it cheerfully. Joel chapter 1 verse 11 and 12. He said, be ye ashamed, O ye husband men. How, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the belly, because the harvest of the field is perished. Why did the harvest of the field perish? Was it that the seed was not sown? No. Verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 12. He says, the vine is dried up, and the fig tree languisheth. He said, the pomegranate tree, the palm tree also, and the apple tree, even all the trees of the field, that means all the labors of their hand that should bring returns. He says, they are withered. Why? He said, because joy is withered away from the sons of men. You are not doing it joyfully, so the harvest becomes lost. Your harvest shall not be lost. Every giving towards kingdom advancement endeavors endeared us to God. So just do it and do it joyfully. Enemies of covenant wealth. Enemies of covenant wealth. Haven't done all to stand. Paul speaking to the church at Ephesus. He says, Stand. How do you stand? By bewaring. Beware of the little foxes that defies the vine. Why? Because the vine has a tender grave. Songs of Solomon chapter 2 verse 15. What are the enemies of covenant words that you must beware of? Number one, beware of wasteful living. Beware of wasteful living. Don't be a waster of God's resources. Why? When a man is a waster of resources, he has not proven himself to be faithful in managing resources before God. Listen, even a church organization, a business organization, whatever, don't be a wasteful or I mean, rather, don't be a waster of resources. Don't be a waster. Learn how to manage God's resources. Whether it's in your place of work, it's in your home, it's in your business. Learn how to man. Be judicious. Be prudent in managing resources. Don't spend because there is money. Of course, we have money. We can spend it. You are living a prodigal life. The prodigal man will soon end up a beggar. You know what it means to be prodigal? To be wasteful in living? It is spending without planning. Spending without what? Without planning. Many people are victims of that. Spending without planning. They are not thinking at all. Spending without budgeting. Spending or living above your means. This is what you earn, but you are living above your means. You are a prodigal individual. And many people get into it all in a bit to impress people that don't like them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They want to impress. You see, when you begin to live beyond your size, you are a waster. You are what? A waster. You are prodigal. 
And it is an abuse of privilege when an individual is a waster. Are you following what I'm saying? Let's quickly read Proverbs chapter 18, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 9. The Bible says, he also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. That means he that cannot manage things properly is a waster. He's a waster. And how do you know a waster? Luke's Gospel chapter 15. Luke's Gospel chapter 15. Let's read from verse 13 to 15. The Bible talking about the story, that popular story that is often referred to as the story of the prodigal boy in verse 13 of Luke's Gospel, chapter 15. He says, and not many days after, the younger son gathered all together. He didn't leave anything behind. Can you see that? <laughs> that is the lifestyle of a prodigal man. That's the lifestyle of a waster. Put that scripture there. He says, gathered all together and took his journey into what? Into a far country. And there, what did he do? He wasted his substance with what? Riotous living. Careless living. Wasteful living. He wasted his resources with careless spend, by careless spending. Riotous living. Spending without thinking. Now, can I talk to you tonight? There are individuals out here listening to me. The things they don't need is what they acquire to themselves. You don't need it. You don't really need it. But just to belong to the group, just to say, well, I, I, I also have this. They go ahead and acquire it. And some, in a bid to acquire it, they end up being indebted. Hello. Praise the Lord. iPhone 12 is in town. And here you are. The whatever iPhone, whatever you are using, is still alive and well. And iPhone 12 has just been advertised is in town. Just to come into the group and say, I also have. You have not planned for it. I'm, say, I'm not saying it's bad. Don't misinterpret me. Don't misrepresent. Don't misquote me. You have no plan. You have no budget for it. But you just went ahead and you just, so that you can say, I'm among those who got it first in town. Or among my friends. I'm among, I'm the first to have it. That's a prodigal man. No, you bought it without planning. You Listen, even when you have enough resources, please carefully plan before you spend. Because what you cannot manage today is a proof that you are not, you know, you are not qualified for a higher level of blessing. So beware of wasteful living. Verse 14. Verse 14 of Luke's Gospel, chapter 15. And when he had spent all, can you see that? Prodigal man, wasteful living. When he had spent all, not that he saved some, when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be what? To be once. Listen, the Bible says riches will develop wings and one day fly away. That's why you don't set your mind on it. That's why you strategize. The Bible said that young boy he spent all. And after spending all, there will always be a time. Hello. Nobody knew if somebody had woken up the first day of January 2020 and said openly loud and clear that there will come a time within the shortest month that the economy of the nations will be down, no flight across the nations of the world, and, 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 de and declare such as we are seeing today. Somebody will say it's not possible. Somebody will look at him and say you are possessed with the devil. But hello, has it not come to be? Who no no go no? When jungle mature, that's what we're seeing now. 
Are you following what I'm saying? The effect of your careful planning financially is we show now whether you can still sustain your family or not. Can I tell you, can I talk to you? If by reason of the challenges of now, you are already begging, hello, go and review your finances. Probably you were wasteful in spending in certain areas. Are you following what I'm saying? You are wasteful in spending in certain areas. That's the truth. The truth seems bitter, but it is the truth. It will help you. Because a man who is not a waster is a strategy. The, it, listen, there is financial intelligence. It's not just how to get the money, but how to manage the money for continuity. There's how to manage the transition period of your life. There's how to review things in order to, for you to stay afloat. Financially, may the Lord give you greater understanding in the precious name of Jesus. And finally, enemies of covenant wealth that you must beware of is the poverty mentality. Is what? Poverty mentality. Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Be careful what goes on in your thoughts. Every man is a captive of his own thought. You can never rise above your thought pattern. If you think poverty, you will live poor. That's the truth. Many people, I don't have, I don't have. Stop this. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop thinking it. Stop thinking it. You have but something in your hand. And don't despise your day of little beginning. I may not have what you have, but I have something. I'm not poor. So stop thinking poverty. Stop thinking failure. Stop belittling yourself because of the resources, the, 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 the limitations of the resources in your hand. If you will wisely use it, if you will plant it, plant it, that seed will become a mighty tree. Are you following what I'm saying? It will become a mighty tree. The mustard seed is the smallest of all the seed, but when it is planted, it becomes a mighty tree. So don't think poverty, don't act poverty, don't, 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 don't talk poor. Just leave your size your time. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. I believe somebody is getting something out of tonight's teaching. Proverbs 4.23, the Bible says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Another version of the Bible says, Out of it are the forces that, got, that, that governs life, that controls life. He said, Keep your heart. Watch over the goings on in your heart. Watch over it. Watch over it. He said, For out of it are the forces that controls life. Watch it. Don't think poverty. Drop poverty mentality. Don't think poor. You don't think poverty. Don't think poverty. Uh, what, so what must you think? Philippians chapter 4. You read verse 8. Whatsoever things are good. They say finally brethren. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are good, of good report. He says if there be any virtue. If there be any praise. He said these are the things that you should think on. He said think on these things. So think right. And remember Philemon, chap Philemon is just one chapter of the Bible. Verse 14. He says without your mind I can do nothing. So whatever goes on in your mind. That is what you see. So I beseech you under God this night. Think what is right. Are you following what I'm saying? You may be starting small today, but don't think poverty because you are not poor. The Lord bless you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We pray by the spirit behind the wall. There shall be a revolution in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. A revolution that will bring us to the place that you have ordained for us as we apply the truths of the word that has been spoken tonight. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' precious name. There are individuals also out there who need to give their life to Jesus tonight because without him you are lost in the world. The world is a wilderness, a jungle. 
and predators of all kind, they are out there roaming, roving, waiting to catch up on you. But your safety is in following Jesus. I'd like you to bow your heads to Jesus tonight and say this prayer after me. You want to give your life to Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you tonight as a sinner. And I pray, Jesus, that you will have mercy on me. Forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior tonight. From today, I turn away from sin to follow after you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' precious name, amen. We'll partake of the communion now, but before we partake of the communion, I'd like to pray for individuals that are under the weight of indebtedness. I'd like you to bow your head. He is the glory and the lifter up of your head. The wisdom that will bail you out of that financial crisis, God is going to release for you. The favor that will supernaturally cancel that debt, God is going to bring your way. Now bow your heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we turn unto you tonight. The Bible says, and when we shall turn unto the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Whatever evil covering, if covering of financial crisis indebtedness that has covered anyone that is listening to me tonight, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus. Let the mercies of God prevail. Let the mercies of God speak. Let the mercies of God intervene. Let there be a lifting up tonight out of that merry clay of indebtedness. Lord, I pray that your favor will shine upon that individual like light from heaven and that debt shall be supernaturally counseled. Provisions more than enough will come from heaven over that matter's issue and that crisis shall be resolved in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' precious name. Now lift up that bread and that drink as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we sanctify this communion tonight. We command it blessed. And we pray that as we partake of it, the life of God, the wisdom of God, begin to answer for us. His divine enablement begin to walk in us to walk the works of God and to show forth the glory of God in our generation, in our time. Thank you, mighty God. Healing for the sick, deliverance for the oppressed as you partake of this communion tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty God. In the precious name of Jesus. The table is blessed. Please go ahead and partake of it. Hallelujah. There's no doubt somebody has been blessed tonight. Somebody has been saved. Somebody has been taught with the power of God. We'd like you to let us know. We want to share your joy. We want to be part of the joy. We want to be part of that testimonies. Look at the numbers being scrolled on the screen and the email address. Reach out unto us and we'll reach unto you and celebrate Jesus with you so that your joy will become full as you walk, we walk the walk with you in your Christian adventure. The Lord bless you and until we come your way again in another dimension with the word of life, remain blessed in Jesus' name. Peace. <laughs>